Are you importing images into Lightroom Classic for the first time? Or how about the 10,000th time? Let's take a look at some of the settings you should be using. Welcome to the Visual Center, I'm Trent. And in today's post-production tips, we're continuing our discussion about Lightroom Classic. In this video, we'll be discussing the importance of the import settings. In my last video, we covered how to create organized storage for our raw images on our computers. Let's continue where we left off. Now, if you haven't, let's open up Lightroom Classic and double check that you're in the library module here, on the top right of the screen. Now move to the bottom left-hand corner and here you'll see the import button. Click on the import button now connect your memory card or your digital camera to the computer. Now what we're looking at here on the screen is the import dialog box or the import window. This is where we'll select our images for import and the settings. On the left side of the screen you see the source panel or where the images are coming from here. In the middle panel are the import actions here at the top and the image previewer here taking up most of the screen. On the right side, we'll see the destination and other detailed import options. Let's begin with the source panel on the left-hand side of the screen here. Now this panel is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, we navigate to our images, which will most likely be on a memory card or a connected digital camera. Now we select the memory card or camera here, and our new images should appear here in the image preview area in the middle. Now I would recommend having include subfolders selected here. This will allow us to see any images in the subfolders within our source. Now let's move to the center panel, which includes the import actions here at the top and the image preview window here. Let's start with the image previewer. At the top, you can select all photos here, which will reveal all our new and old images from our source. We can also select new photos to only preview unimported images or new images. At the bottom left side of the preview image, we can also switch between loop view and thumbnail view right here. This is just a different method of previewing our images like this. One will provide a more global view of all our images and the other a larger, more detailed view of one of our images. We can also use the keyboard arrows to navigate between images like this. Now, I'm going to switch back to loop view so I can see all of my images. Uh, next to this option, we also have a selection control for the amount of images we'd like to import. Check all selects all the images in the preview window for import. Uncheck all deselects all the images. Now you see the check boxes next to the images. If a box is checked, that's what will be imported. Now we can manually select the images we'd like to import by utilizing these check boxes. If we select the first image and then hold down the shift key and highlight further along with the other images, and then we select a checkbox, now those highlighted images will be checked. These checked images are the only images which will be imported. Now I'm going to check all, since I would like every image imported from this card. Next we can select how our images will be sorted. I like to use capture time since I like to view the images in the order they were taken. We can also reverse this order by selecting this AZ symbol here. And finally, next to this option, we have a thumbnail size slider. Slide it back and forth to increase and decrease the size of the thumbnail previews. Now let's take a look at the top of the center panel. These are our import image options. They include copy as DNG, copy, move, and add. Each of these actions contains a short description here underneath. Now remember, with Lightroom Classic, there are two components we need to be uh, considering when we're importing our images. They are the original raw image from our camera or memory card and the preview image that will go within our catalog of Lightroom. Now if we're going to be editing images in Lightroom Classic, we need to import preview images into the catalog. If you need a refresher regarding this, be sure to watch my previous video. Now each of these import options handles the raw and preview images differently. Copy as DNG, this first one, will read the raw images from our memory card and convert them to DNGs and save them into the location we select. 
It will also create a preview image and add it to our catalog so we can start editing. Now GNG are another form of raw image. This option will take a bit longer when we import since it's converting our raw images to DNG. Now I personally don't see a point in converting my images to DNG. I have plenty of storage space on my computer and my computer can handle the raw images my camera captures. So we won't be utilizing this option. Next we have copy. This option saves our raw files to whatever location we select and also adds a preview image to our Lightroom catalog. Now after, co after copy we have move. This option is used only if we already have our raw images on our computer. This option will move the raw images to a new location and add them to our Lightroom catalog. Last, we have the add option. This will only add our image preview to our Lightroom catalog from our raw images already on our computer. If we already copied our raw images from our memory cards or our digital camera onto our computer and we don't want to change the location, then this is the option we use. Now, depending on where our images are currently found, and the source we select on the left-hand panel, we may only be able to see two of these import options. Now again, just to reiterate, regardless of what op which option we choose, if we want to use Lightroom Classic, we will have to create image previews and add them to our catalog. Each one of these options creates and adds an image preview to our Lightroom catalog. Now I'll be using the copy option since I'm importing my raw images from a memory card. Now let's move to the final image on the right. Depending on how you've selected to import your images, you may not see all the options you see here on my screen. Now the top of the right hand panel, we can see the location where we want to save our raw images. It's a simple drop down menu with the option to select other destination. This will open up a new finder window and allow us to navigate to the location where we'd like our raw images saved. Now below this, we have the file handling dropdown. This is where you'd select the type of preview image we would like to create and use within our Lightroom Classic catalog and where we would choose to back up our images. First, we have the build preview options here. We have minimal, embedded in sidecar, standard, and one-to-one. -one. Minimal previews are the smallest preview images. They are generated within our camera and embedded within the raw images. They are the fastest type of preview to create, but contain low resolution. Now embedded in sidecar previews also utilize the embedded JPEG image found within the original raw image. This is the same JPEG preview you'd see on the back of your camera when you're reviewing images. Now these previews are a little larger than the minimal previews and so can take a little bit longer to create. Now next is the standard preview. These preview images are created by Lightroom. This option creates a better preview image than the previous two options, and depending on the task, this size of preview is the minimum size needed if we're going to be working on our images in the software. Now last we have one-to-one. -one. This is the largest preview we can build in Lightroom Classic. One-to-one -one represents a one-to-one -one copy of actual pixels within the original raw image. It takes a little longer to create, but if we're going to be zooming into our images while we're editing, then Lightroom will need to create this size of preview anyways. Now this time I'll be using the standard preview option here. Next is the don't import selected duplicate checkbox. This prevents any previously imported images from being imported a second time. Next is the make a second copy to option. This is a great way to back up our raw images during import. Just click and select your backup location. Now this is the option you'd use if you want to create a backup of your raw images. You'd connect an external drive and just select that as the location for the second copies to be copied to. Now, this last checkbox here allows us to add the images being imported to a collection. We'll be going over collections in an upcoming video, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you can follow along. Now next we can use the file renaming section to rename our files. Perhaps you would like to title the images something related to the shoot, a client's name, location, or maybe the subject's name. We can also add dates and other custom names to our images here. Now next we have the apply during import options. This is where we'd select um, to apply a preset. Again, something we'll be discussing in a future video, so you know what to do. Last, we have the destination option. This section reflects the location we chose at the top of the panel here. Just like before, we would use this section to select where we'd like our images saved. There are a few organizational drop-down options here in the middle 
Now I use this to organize by date and select the date format I prefer. All right, now after selecting all the settings we want over here, we can move to the import button and select it. Now this will close the import window and take us back to our main Lightroom Classic screen. Here at the top left corner, you can see the status of our raw image import and preview image creation. We should start to see images, as you see here, beginning to appear in the Lightroom catalog. Now we're ready to start editing. All right, that's it. In my next video, we'll be discussing the layout of Lightroom Classic. So again, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. If you have any questions about the process we just covered, be sure to add them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.